word. More real. Uh, he didn't actually fire him. They didn't renew his contract. They did not retain. Oh, they mutually parted yeah. or whatever. They did not retain Kellen Moore as offensive coordinator. I think maybe his contract was up. Uh, that's what made this easier. But Mike McCarthy has named himself offensive coordinator, Denny. Oh. This is the same Mike McCarthy who, by the by the end of his time in Green Bay, Packers fans were like basically like gouging their eyes out with spoons yes. on Twitter. Yeah. Like, oh, guess what? He called another slant. Um, <laughs> that was the theme of Mike McCarthy on Twitter. What effect will Mike McCarthy naming himself offensive coordinator have on Dallas's offense, Denny. It is amazing to see McCarthy after another postseason disappointment basically say to Kellen Moore and the rest of the organization, I'm the captain now. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, this didn't work out. I'm taking over. So McCarthy strikes me, and looking back at his uh, history uh, as a play caller, uh, he strikes me as a guy – uh, for whom the game has passed him by. Um, I, I, I don't know how else to say that. Uh, there, there are, you know, when he, he was offensive corner for the Saints, folks forget, back way back when, 23 years ago. And a lot of his play calling success has come with a good amount of rushing. Uh, I know that during the Aaron Rodgers uh, prime, that was, that's, that's a, a, a little um, uh, deceiving because, Rodgers was so hyper efficient during those seasons that they actually didn't have to throw that often. Like I know from a fantasy standpoint, I remember Rodgers being able to score 30 fantasy points on like 11 throws. So, oh, um, so there, that, that is, that's a little bit deceptive, but I, I, I think that this means bad things for the Dallas offense. I think it, it, it means a more, a more conservative approach. I think that the tension between Kellen Moore and Mike McCarthy was that Kellen Moore wanted to run a pass first, uh, modernized offense, and McCarthy did not want that. So I, I, I don't see it going well. Cowboy stats and graphics are really good account on Twitter. So you pointed out that it's just bizarre that they really had pretty much successfully met in the middle. Like they were running a little too much. Some would say a lot too much and not mixing up maybe the play calling enough where – they just weren't doing it in an EV fashion, the runs. Like, as we know, you can still run the ball. You just have to be not so predictable as when you run the ball. But the day had really mostly had success together, Kellen Moore and Mike McCarthy. And that he pointing out that they basically seem to be overreacting to their end of season losses the past two years, yeah, the Cowboys. Right, and right. like frustrating, highly visible failures, especially what happened against the 49ers this year, where just. The game, the score was competitive, but the Cowboys just didn't really compete in that game the way they should have with their personnel. But, like, did it just making this sort of drastic change just feels like a grave overreaction from the Cowboys. And, it's like you said, a guy who he couldn't figure out how to score points with Aaron Rodgers in Green yeah. Bay, who then yeah. after they fired him, proceeded to win 13 games three straight years and win two MVPs for Aaron Rodgers. And it seems like, yeah, a guy who was kind of out of ideas. And maybe he has some new ideas. Maybe he's yeah. been rejuvenated by working with Kellen Moore, but it yeah. just seems like a very, very, very poor idea. Yeah, it's uh it's I think for fantasy purposes, it's a pretty big red flag for the offense in, in, in general. Um McCarthy yeah. was obsessed with short passing in Green Bay. I think even more than he was obsessed with running, he was obsessed with short passing. I mean, maybe that'll keep like the PPR dream alive for some of these guys. Sure, but... sure. Um, I, I just, I don't, I just think that if the, the guy who wanted to be more traditional and establish it and run on first down and things of that nature, he won, he won in the end. And that just can't be good for, for this team. I know we'll get to more in a second, but, um, when the, when the Cowboys, I remember when the Cowboys went pretty pass heavy, at least in the first half against Tampa Bay in the uh, playoff game. And Moore was was like celebrating with McCarthy in a way that was like, hey, it's working, Mike. Like my thing is working where we're passing it all the time, even in even on first down. And and uh, it's it's really working out. We're going to win this game, Mike. What do you think? And uh, it didn't didn't hold for the next game, did not hold against the night. No, no. And yeah, I just I don't, I don't understand. Why. I mean, it's too. It, the, this is simplistic analysis, but. Maybe it's a red flag when several teams are interested in your offensive coordinator as a head coach. Yeah, yeah. It's not good enough to be your offensive coordinator, though. 
Um, I mean, maybe it was an untenable situation and they they just couldn't, they were just at a total loggerheads and they didn't want to fire Mike McCarthy and it wouldn't do anyone any good for them to continue to work together. But I mean, then that's just bad in a different way. I I think, you know, I think what you're saying is that uh, others, other teams like deep interest in a, a play caller indicates that there is, there's, there's something there that the other, the, the former team did not see. Another example is Mike LaFleur from, you know, being fired by the Jets. I know this a mutual, whatever it wasn't, he was fired. Yeah, so he's fired. fired 15 minutes later. He's picked up by Sean McVay. Yeah. You simply know? love for my fired offensive yeah. coordinator to be immediately hired by the single best evaluator of coaching talent in the NFL, Sean McVay. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. So, so the, the, the best offensive mind in the league hires your guy. You bring on the biggest laughing stock in the entire NFL and Nathaniel Hackett. It seems like a bad move to me, Pat. I don't know. Especially when they become the second team in two years to hire Nathaniel Hackett with the express purpose of luring Aaron Rodgers to New York, and then it does not work. It, it worked for the Broncos. Let's see if it works for the Jets. Yeah, let's see if it works for the Jets. So we talked about Kellen Moore having interest from other teams. One of those teams is the Los Angeles Chargers, who everyone's like, uh, you got to fire Joe Lombardi. They do fire Joe Lombardi. Then yeah. Kellen Moore is a coaching free agent for like 20, 30 minutes before the char- Chargers <laughs> scooped him up. I made him the new offensive coordinator, Denny. Seems like a good development for Justin Herbert. What is going to be the effect of Kellen Moore's arrival in Los Angeles? I almost said San Diego. You're right. Well, he's, uh, he, may, he may spend some time in San Diego. Yeah, he will. Yeah. He's going to be driving down there. Uh, so since the start of 2021, uh, Dak Prescott under Kellen Moore in his system had um, <clears throat> averaged eight air yards per attempt. That was 12th among qualifying quarterbacks. Uh, Justin Herbert, since the start of 2021, is 29th among man, all man. quarterbacks in air yards per attempt at seven. Just he's criminal. Be- he's behind deep ball uh, aficionados such as Jimmy Garoppolo and Andy <laughs> Dalton. Uh, and so if you look at their yeah, eight, best pro bowlers, Jimmy Garoppolo and Andy Dalton, to you. <laughs> uh, if you look at their average depth of target over the past two seasons, Dak Prescott sits at 8.7, uh, Justin Herbert all the way down at 6.8, one of the lowest in the NFL, uh, Dak Prescott throws, uh, downfield at a higher rate. It's uh, what, what I'm saying here is that we might, this might be a step in the right direction for our desire to see Justin Herbert use his all world arm to propel the ball forward more than five yards at a time. Um, I will say the caveat to this is that the Chargers may want to get some receivers who run the yes. 40 in under five seconds. Yes. Uh, and the uh, caveat too, their number one receiver who ran, who ran the 40 infamously about four, six Keenan Allen coming into the NFL, kind of getting a little like cap casualty rumors. Um, yeah. So even he yeah. could be gone. So even maybe the underneath game, Maybe in need of being remade. So yeah, Kellen Moore, his success is going to be, they're going to have to get some better skill talent in there in Los yeah, Angeles. I actually think it was a, a bit of a combination of, of, a, of a bad offensive scheme operated by Joe Lombardi, basically turning uh, Justin Herbert into Drew Brees. We've talked about that. But also just a, la- a lack of downfield options. I mean, if Mike Williams wasn't in, that ball was not going beyond 10 yards ever. Okay, Josh yeah. Palmer's slow. Keenan Allen's slow. Austin Eckler operates obviously around the line of scrimmage. Uh, you know, uh, Everett is not scaring anybody as a downfield threat. So they, I think it was a mix of the scheme plus the lack of, of downfield personnel, which is why I'm once again, begging DJ Chark to consider the charge. Yeah, consider the chart. And also, of course we can't forget the offensive line injuries, which yeah. Justin Herbert had some of the worst protection in the NFL. So Kellen Moore is going to need a few things to break, right? But there's no question what he's put on NFL film over the past several seasons is just a lot better than the Joe Lombardi has at several stops. Um, so he, he only knows how to call plays one way. He's from that Sean Payton, Drew Brees school, like you said, and he's just not going to open up, you know, maybe part of it too, is Justin Herbert. Maybe Justin Herbert really is kind of a more conservative quarterback than we would like to admit. But if that's the case, then he needs a coach who's going to coax him out of that shell. Yes. And Joe Lombardi just had no interest in doing that. They were two peas and the short area pod. Um, so probably about as good a hire as the Chargers could have made, to be honest. For I own. love it. I really, yeah, I really yeah. do like the hire. I think Brandon Staley has made difficult 
decisions, uh, but these decisions could keep him in uh, as as head coach of the Chargers for you know I don't know not forever, but for a long for a long time. I think that he's made the right choices. He he knew that Joe Lombardi was not the long term answer, and that he could not possibly go into another season with Lombardi calling plays. Yeah, we always know that Chargers bill comes due. He'll probably be gone in two years. But yeah, probably. maybe it won't be because of Kellen Moore. Producer Adam points out they have. Three picks in the top 85, yeah. the Chargers. So there's going to be at least one skill player uh, arriving in that group. Uh, you know, I would love to see LA uh, in, invest a high draft pick on a receiver. I think that would people are out there like watching these like shrine games. Where they, they're telling me that it's supposedly not a good receiver class. Finally, I've had several good receiver classes in a row, yeah. but uh, well, hopefully the Chargers can find some receiver help. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.